Let's get on with the details of those stories now. The atomic gas explosion left in its trial death, uh, destruction and permanent scars on its victims. One of them is 31-year-old Ibn Tete, whose back is covered with an infected sore. A thick yellowish liquid continues to drip from the wounds on his leg. The SHS dropout who is unable to sleep on his back says he fled the 37 military hospital where he was receiving treatment because he was not getting the best of health care as government had initially promised the victims. Abraham, who now sleeps in an uncompleted building in Adenta because they were evacuated from the explosion site, says he left the hospital at dawn to raise money to seek what he describes as better medical care elsewhere. John News' Maxwell Agbagba caught up with him and has come through with this report. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Screams of shock as Abraham lifted his blood-stained long sleeve shirt to show us the severe bends on his back. In fact, his entire back is bends and now turned a field of degenerating soil. The black skin layer on his back is completely off, leaving a pink cover. Abraham had struggled for almost 10 minutes to lift the shirt because it was stuck to the pink skin. At a point, he asked me if I could smell him when I got closer. That is not the only part of his body affected by the explosion. His legs rest on the floor as a thick yellowish liquid continuously drips from them. He sits on a bench as he narrates to me how he fell from the top of the atomic overhead bridge. The interchange. Yeah, I saw a journalist there who was taking a shot. So I just went to him and I was standing by him looking at the, uh, the fire. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the second tank exploded. And in fact, you could see the fire uh, with no smoke, but you could see it like a sunshine. It's more than a sunshine, mm. heavy. So I and the journalist, okay, I'll call him a journalist because he said he, he's a Oman FM journalist. So we lied. I think that guy died. Yes. We lied on the floor, on one side. The fire is at one side. Mm. So we just jump off from the top of the vibe yeah we jumped i fell backwards from there i couldn't see anything oh i can't because um, it's very stuck to the wound mm. and unless you get some water that is abraham responding to me when i asked him to remove the bandana covering his head the bandana is stuck to the injuries on his head. He said he usually applies water to it before he's able to remove it. Abraham says he was not satisfied with the treatment given him at the 37 military hospital, so had to leave to seek better help elsewhere. But as it appears, Abraham is worse off. They took me to a place called ICU. Yeah, that's where it took me. Um, the treatment over there is solid. In fact, if I said I'll show you some parts of uh, my body from here to my knee, mm. uh, sorry, to my elbow, mm. you could see that it's okay over there. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like here. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like here. We get good food there. Mm. They give us good food. Good caretaking. You eat and you'll be satisfied. You fool yourself that, ah, I'm enjoying. A few months later, and they decide to take us from where we are. Me to me, it's almost like half hell. Nobody cares about you. You'll be bandaged for like four days. You've seen my back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will be smelling, and it's very bad. Not me alone. We're about five in the room. Everybody has its own scent. And it, it, it's bad. So I decided to, I decided to be myself that I, I will run away and go and look for help, maybe. 
that can solve my problem. I would say on my two weeks mm. there, that time where I see you, that's where um, the vice president came. Mm. Yeah. He came telling us that uh, the government is in support and so they'll make sure everything by as to what he said and to what we were, to what I'm seeing there, I felt that yeah, the government is in control. But the moment I came to Allied and I felt that no, the government is not in control at that place. Mm. Because your medicine will get finished, you will ask and what they'll be telling you is the government is not providing anything, the government is not providing no money, mm. blah, blah, blah. This uh, bottle, mm. for now, I don't see myself as a human. Yeah, because as I'm sitting like that, I'm smelling. I don't know if you're feeling it. No, yeah, but I'm smelling very bad. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 After the explosion at the atomic junction, Tete and his friends were evacuated um, from that area where they previously lived. Well, after he left the 37 Litchi Hospital um, a week ago, this is where he stays now in this uncompleted structure owned by the State Housing Company Limited. He sleeps on the first floor here because he cannot get access to his home any longer. <laughs> I think it's a cardboard. Oh. Mm. I'm currently on the first floor where 32 year old Tete um, now sleeps. Um, these are the cardboards that he usually lays his head on the hard concrete um, floor. You can still see um, the bread here, and then some um, a, a mosquito coil also, um, and then um, another cardboard, and then a soap that he talked to me about earlier that he uses um, to take his shower. The life of the 31 year old is now on the brink. He is not oh. and may never be I the same see. after this experience, he says. Maxwell Agbaba, Joy News. Hopefully some responses, positive responses from government will come uh, on the back of that particular story. But whether or not uh, where he is is better than the hospital, I'm not quite sure.